ఆయతుల కుర్సీ స్టార్ట్స్ ఆయన టూ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫైవ్ ఆయతుల కుర్సీ స్టార్ట్స్ అల్లాహు లాహు అల్ హయ్యుల్ హయం అల్లా దెర్ ఈస్ నో డియటి ఎక్సెప్ట్ హిమ్ ద ఎవర్ లివింగ్ ద సస్టైనర్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఎగ్జిస్టెన్స్ లా తాఖుజు సినతుం వలా నౌమ్ నీదర్ డ్రౌజీనెస్ ఓవర్ టేక్స్ హిమ్ నాట్ స్లీప్ లహు మాఫిస్ సమావాతి వ మాఫిలద్ టు హిమ్ బిలాంగ్స్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ అండ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఆన్ అర్త్ మన్జల్ లజి యష్వో ఇన్ దహు ఇల్లా బిజ్ని హూ ఇస్ ఇట్ దట్ కెన్ ఇంటర్సీడ్ విత్ హిమ్ ఎక్సెప్ట్ బై హిస్ పర్మిషన్ యా లహు మా బైన ఐది హిమ్ వ మా ఖల్ఫహు he knows what is presently before them what will be after them wala yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bi ma sha and they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills wasiya kursi yuh samawati wal ard his footstool extends over the heaven and the earth wala ya'uduhu hifzuhuma and their preservation tires him not wahuwa aliyul azim and he is the most high most great this aya aitul kursi is the greatest aya of the quran because it talks about who the greatest one it mention who the greatest one allah azwajal and in this aya five names of allah subhanahu wa taala are mentioned and almost 20 attributes of allah are mentioned that is why we see that this aya is very very powerful so much so that the recitation of this aya in the night is a means of protection from shaitan all night long when a person recite this aya in the night he is safe from shaitan for how long for the entire duration of the night in hadith we learn that when a person goes to bed and he recite aitul kursi then there will be a guard from allah who will protect him all night long and shaitan will not be able to come near him until fajr so remember that abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu who said this to him shaitan said this to him when abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu caught shaitan repeatedly in the night so what happened shaitan said this is to abu huraira and the next morning when abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he is a liar but he has spoken the truth at this occasion which means that when a person does recite aitul kursi in the night when he goes to bed then what will happen until morning he is protected he is safe from who shaitan so this aya aitul kursi what is mentioned the names of allah are mentioned who described allah azza wa jal is described the first description of allah that is given in this ayah is the name of allah and the name of allah is very powerful and blessed name tabarak asma rabbukal zil jalali wal ikram the name of your lord meaning the name of your lord allah the name is blessed so here in aitul kursi the beautiful names of allah tabarak asma rabbik allazi zal jalali wal ikram the name of your lord meaning the name of your lord allah that name is blessed so this name is powerful and here in hadith we learn that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you hear the barking of dogs and braying of donkeys in the night then seek refuge with allah auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim because these creature they see what you do not see and live it going out when the footsteps have quitted meaning outside when there is silence when there are no people walking around when everybody is gone to sleep prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't go out at that time means limit your going out at that time why because indeed allah spreads in the night whoever of his creation that he wills close the doors and say the name of allah you know when you close the door say bismillah and close it so when you close the door at night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said say bismillah why because indeed shaitan cannot open a closed door on which allah name was mentioned so when you are closing a door and you mention the name of allah the shaitan cannot open that door and 
the name of Allah is so powerful. So here the fact is that person who does not mention the name of Allah when he is doing something important, then in reality he is becoming a companion of shaitan. And he is becoming a helper of shaitan. Why? Because he is letting shaitan have a share in what he is doing. Prophet said, the screen between the eyes of the jinn and nakedness of the children of Adam when one of you enters the area of relieving once is saying Bismillah. Means when we go to washroom, we are unclothed. Then what is that will screen us from shaitan saying Bismillah before entering it. So Bismillah saying the name of Allah. This is like you know when you say uh, Bismillah like you know even in washroom you can say Bismillah but uh, not in the uh, toilet. Here, when we enter the washroom, before that, you should recite the wa, not after entering, but okay, before entering it. But for Bismillah, it is allowed, especially for the wudu and when you are taking shower. And this is something that brings a barrier between us and shaitan, that protects us from shaitan so much so that even at the time of intimacy, having relationship with husband and wife, make dua that time say bismillah and allahumma jannib bi shaitanib jannib bi shaitan wa ma razaqtana so also we learn that iblis asked allah that all of your creation ha has its uh, a proportionate provision so oh allah what is it for me every creation has its own provision the animal they have their own food have their um, like you know own food human beings have their own food so isn't that so Iblis said, what is for me? Allah said that on which my name is not mentioned. So any food that is eaten and the name of Allah is not mentioned over there, then who has share in that food? Who will benefit from it? Shaitan will benefit from it. So when we say the name of Allah, what are we doing? We are protecting ourselves from the influence, from the participation of Shaitan. So how is it that we secure our provision how is it that we secure our action our deeds by taking the name of allah the most powerful name and the most powerful word of allah and then in aital kursi the next thing we learn is la ilaha illahu that there is no god worthy of worship but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying la ilaha illallah this is abdalul zikr this is the most superior zikr the best, the best form of remembering Allah is what? Saying la ilaha illallah. Nov said, if the skies and the earth, whatever is with them, if they are replaced on one side of the scale, it, if they are placed on one side of the scale and la ilaha illallah is placed on the other side of the scale, then the later will be heavier. Which one will be heavier? The one which has la ilaha illallah. This is why the person who believes in la ilaha illallah and the person who says la ilaha illallah with all his heart, even if he ends up saying it only once, then what will happen? If he dies, where will he end up? Eventually in Jannah. There's a hadith. A man came to Prophet Wasallam at the battle of Khaybar and he embraced Islam. He said, La ilaha illallah. And immediately he participated in the battle. And what happened? He passed away. He was killed in the battle. Prophet ﷺ, when he buried him, he said, This is a man who has not even made one sujood. But he will enter Jannah. Why? Because he said, La ilaha illallah. How heavy is this statement? How powerful is this statement? So Allah, la ilaha illahu, say it with all your heart. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illahu. Al hayyul khayyum, the ever living, the sustainer of all existence. So al hayyul khayyum, these are the names of Allah. And remember, these are no ordinary names of Allah. These names are what? 
ismullah al azim so the greatest names of allah such names which when a person says when he is making dua then his dua will be accepted this is why we see that at battle of badr when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in extreme difficulty he was in extreme worry what did he say ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis can you repeat it ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis o ever living o eternal one i seek your help by your mercy means you help me ya hayyu ya qayyum we learn that at one occasion a man made dua he came to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was near him and anas radhiyallahu anhu was also near by and this man he made dua saying ya badiyu samawati ya hayyu ya qayyum inni as'aluka o originator of the heavens and the earth o ever living and eternal i ask you prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do you know what this man has made dua with he said by the one in whose hand is my soul this man has call upon allah by those names which when he is called by then allah accepts the dua meaning when a person makes dua and he takes these names of allah ya hayyu ya qayyum then the dua is it rejected no way it's going to be accepted so whenever we want our duas to be accepted then what should we do make dua with the names of allah neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission he knows what is presently before them what will be after them and they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills then we learn in aitul kursi the name of allah subhanahu wa taala here the kursi of allah subhanahu wa taala what is the kursi of allah the kursi of allah is different from his arsh the arsh is the throne and the kursi the scholars the sahaba they interpreted this is a footstool of allah and how huge is this kursi when compared to the skies the earth the entire creation universe that we know about what we learn from hadith is that the entire universe the sky the earth compared to the kursi of allah are like a ring in a desert you know like a ring in a desert you see the huge room imagine if there is a ring tossed somewhere on the floor imagine the size of the ring compared to this room then imagine the size of that ring compared to an open huge massive desert endless desert what's the comparison here imagine how small the samawat and earth are allah says wasiya kursi yuh samawati walad so huge is his kursi then imagine the magnitude of his throne of his arsh then imagine the greatness of allah subhanahu wa taala this is why wa huwa al aliyul azim is exalted the highest one there is no one higher above allah and he is azim the greatest one there is no one greater than allah this is why who is it that we should exalt the most allah subhanahu wa taala and who is it that we should remember the most allah subhanahu wa taala fasabbi bismi rabbikal azim glory the name of your lord who is your lord azim the great one and when uh, when is it that we say subhana rabbiyal azim in what position in the position of ruku abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu reported that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he who says in the morning subhanallah al azim wa bihamdihi the person who says in the morning subhanallah al azim wa bihamdihi 100 times and in evening also 100 times then no one in the creation will have the same level as him so what would you like to be at the top of all the people of the world would you like to do something that is best so what is that we need to do subhanallah al azim wa bihamdi 100 times in morning and evening so 
if we say quietly now, Subhanallah, Lazim, wa bihamdi. Quietly we can say, just for a few seconds, isn't it? Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah, Lazim, wa bihamdihi. It doesn't take much time though. We can try it. And Allah chose it. Allah chose it for Himself. So what is our duty? Accept Allah's decision. Do amal. Let's move to next ayah. There shall be no virtue of Ayatul Kursi. And let's begin. This is a ayah, Ayatul Kursi, and tremendous virtues has been mentioned about it. The authentic hadith. Imam Ahmad recorded Obey bin Kaab radiallahu anhu said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him about the greatest ayah in the book of Allah and Obey answered Allah and his messenger know better. When Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa repeated this question several times Obey said Aytul Kursi. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa commented congratulations for having a knowledge of Abu al Mundir by his in whose hand is my soul, this ayah has a tongue and two lips with she praises the king and next to the leg of the thorn. The hadith was also collected by Muslim. Include the part of the starts with by he in whose hand. Imam Ahmad recorded and other also recorded the hadith. And here, Al-Bukhari recorded a similar story in Sahih from Abu Huraira on the virtue of the Quran and the description of Shaitan. He narrated, said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, assigned me to keep the watch over the Sadaqa, charity of Ramadan. A person snuck and started taking handful of foodstuff. I caught him and said, by Allah, I will take you to the Allah's messenger. He said, release me, for I am meek and have many dependents on me. And uh, many dependents on me in great need. So here we see this is a greatest ayah and here it was mentioned and have many dependent and am is a great need. And I released him and in the morning Allah's messenger asked me, what did your prisoner do yesterday? Abu Huraira said, O oh Allah's Messenger, he complained of being needy and having many dependents. So I pitied him and let him go. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, indeed, he told you a lie and will be coming again. I believe that he would show up again for the Allah's Messenger وسلم, had told me that he would return. So I watched for him when he showed up and started stealing handful uh, of foodstuff. I caught hold of him again and said, I will definitely take you to Allah's Messenger Wasallam." He said, leave me for I am very needy and have many dependents. I promise I will not come back again. I will pity him and let him go. Who oh, Abu Huraira and this was Shaitan. Later on will come to know. And in the morning, Allah's Messenger وسلم, asked me, what did your prisoner do last night? Abu Huraira replied, O oh, Allah's Messenger وسلم, he complained of his great need and of too many dependents, so I took pity on him and set him free. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, barely, he told you a lie, he will return. I waited for him attentively for the third time. When he came and started stealing handful of the foodstuff, I caught hold of him and said, I will surely take you to Allah's messenger. And this is the third time. And he promised not to return. He said, let me teach you some words. Who is saying this? Shaitan. Which uh, Allah will give you benefit from. I asked, what are they? He replied, whenever you go to bed, recite Aydal Kursi Allahu la ilaha till you finish the whole verse. If you do so, Allah will appoint a guard for you who will stay with you and no shaitan will come near you until morning. So I released him. In the morning, Allah's Messenger وسلم, asked, What did your prisoner do yesterday? I replied, Oh Allah's Messenger, وسلم, he claimed that he would teach me some words by which Allah will grant me some benefit. So let him go. Allah's Messenger وسلم, asked, What are they? 
I replied, he said to me, whenever you go to bed, recite Ayatul Kursi from beginning to end, Allah Laila. He further said to me, if you do so, Allah will appoint a guard for you and who will stay with you and not shaitan will come near you until morning. So one of the narrator then commented that companions were very keen to do good deeds. Prophet ﷺ said he spoke the truth, although he is a liar. So about whom these three things, like you know, three nights uh, Abu Huraira was talking to, he was a shaitan. And this is in Nisai and, and this is an authentic narration. And there was a hadith in that, uh, let me quote that also. Imam Ahmad recorded that Abu Ayyub said that he had some dates and a goal used to take some and he complained to Prophet ﷺ, said to him, when you see her, say in the name of Allah, answer to the messenger of Allah. Abu Ayyub said that when she came to again, he said this words and he was able to grab her. She begged, I will not come again. So Abu Ayyub released her. Abu Ayyub went to Prophet ﷺ and Prophet asked him, what did your prisoner do? Abu Ayyub said, I grabbed her and she said twice, I will not come again. I released her. Prophet ﷺ said, she will come back. Abu Ayyub said, so I grabbed her twice or three, three times. Yet each time I would release her when she vowed not to come back. I will go to the Prophet ﷺ who would ask me, what is the news of your prisoner? I would say, I grabbed her and then released her when she said that she would not return. Prophet ﷺ would say, that she would return. Once I grabbed her and she said, release me, I will teach you something to recite so that no harm touches you. That is Aital Kursi. Abu Ayyub went to Prophet ﷺ and told him and Prophet ﷺ said, she is liar, but she told truth. At Tirmidhi recorded this hadith in the chapter of the virtue of the Quran and said, Hassan, in Arabic, Ghul refers to the jinn when they appear at the night. And Al-Bukhari recorded a similar story and which we narrated about uh, Abu Huraira. So these are the two similar uh, hadith regarding this. And it has Allah's greatest name in Ayat al-Kursi. And Imam Ahmad recorded that Asma bint Yazid bin As-Sakan said, I heard Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa saying about these two ayahs, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum. Allah none has the right to be worshipped, but He, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. And uh, here, Alif Lam means Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. This is in Surah Al Ali Imran. Has right to be worshipped, and one who sustains, protects all that exists. Inna fihi masmallah al azim. They contain Allah's greatest name, Ismailah al azim. This is all the narration collected by Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. Further, it was said Allah's greatest name, if he was supplicate with it, he answers the supplication. Is the three surahs, Al-Bahra, Ali Imran and Surah Taha. And uh, Hisham bin Amr and Khatib, one of the narrators, uh, as for Surah Al-Bahra, it is in Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Allah none has the right to be worshipped, but He, the ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. In Ali Imran, it is like the starting ayahs. Alif Lam means Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. And this are the end. In Surah Taha, wa anibul wujuhul lil hayyul qayyum. That is mentioned in ayah number 111. Faces shall be humble before Allah, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. So Ayat al-Kursi has 10 complete uh, sentences like Allahu la ilaha illahu and Allah ha, uh, none has the right to be worshipped but he. So here we see the virtue of it like uh, when it says al Allah la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Allah, there is no deity except Him, the ever living, all existence. So here we see, like uh, 
this ayah is the greatest ayah of the Quran because it talks about who the greatest one. It mentions about that greatest one, Allah's Wajal. And in ayah, some says five names are mentioned. Almost 20 attributes of Allah are mentioned. That is why we see that ayah is very powerful. So much so that the, the recitation of ayah in the night is a means of protection from shaitan all night. And here we see al hayyul qayyum testifies that Allah is ever living and who never die. He sustains everyone and everything. All creation stands in need of Allah and totally relies on him. While he is the most rich who stands in the need of nothing created. Slim, similar Allah said. In Surah number 30 and Ayah number 25. And among his sign is that heaven and the earth stand by his command. And Allah's statement. La wala naum, neither slumber nor sleep overtake him. No shortcoming. No unawareness of ignorance. That is Allah. Rather he is aware of and control whatever, what every soul earns. Has perfect watch over everything. Nothing escape his knowledge. No secret matter. To him among his perfect attribute is the fact that he never affected by the slumber of sleep. Therefore Allah's statement, La ta sinatun and wala naum, no sleep, no slumber. And here Abu Musa said the Messenger of Allah delivered a speech regarding four words. Allah does not sleep, does not befit his majesty that he sleeps. He lowers the scale and raises them. The deeds of the day are restricted in front of him before the deeds of the night and the deeds of the night before the deeds of the day. His veil is light. Or fire, and he removes the rays from his face, would burn whatever his sight reaches of his creation. To him belongs whatever in earth, in the heaven and earth, indicates everyone is the servant of Allah, is a part of his kingdom and under his power and authority. And we see that. Inna kulli min man fis samawati wal ad illa ata rahmanu abdan. And in this it was mentioned, Surah number 19, Ayah number 93 to 95. There is none in heaven and earth but comes unto most gracious Allah as a servant. Verily, He knows each one of them and has counted them a full counting. And every one of them will come to Him alone on the day of resurrection without any help or all. Protector of defender. And Allah's statement, Manzalazi Yashfo in the Hu illa bisni. And who is it that can intercede with him except with his permission? Is similar to the ayah Vakam min Malike is Samawati La Toguni. This is in Surah number 53, ayah number 26. And there are many angels in the heaven whose intercession will avail nothing. Except what Allah has given me for him, he wills and pleased with it. You know, here also we see without the permission of Allah, no one can be intercede. Wala yashfa'una illa liman arda. This is in Surah number 21 and Ayah number 28. They cannot intercede except for whom Allah pleased. So these ayah asserts Allah's greatness, pride, grace and then... No one dares to intercede with him on behalf of anyone else except by his permission. Indeed, the hadith about intercession that Prophet ﷺ said, I will stand under the throne and fall into prostration, means sujood, and Allah will allow me to remain in that position as much as he wills. I will thereafter, he told, raise your head, speak and you will be heard. Intercede, your intercession will be accepted. Prophet ﷺ then said, He will allow me a proportion whom I will enter into paradise. And Allah's statement will be, He knows what happens to them, His creation in this world and what happened to them in the hereafter. And we see in uh, Surah number 19 and Ayah number 64, we angels descend not except by the command of your Lord, O Muhammad. To him belong what is before us and what is behind. 
what is between those two and your Lord is never forgetful. And here, wala yuhi tu na bishayin min ilmihi and they will never encompass anything uh, by his knowledge except that which he wills. And this is the similar to the ayah number 110 in surah 20. Wala yuhi tu na bihi ilma but they will never encompass anything of his knowledge. And wasiya kursi hu samawati wal ard his kursi extends over the heavens and earth. And Vaki narrated in Tafsi that Ibn Abbas said, Kursi is the footstool. And no one is able to give due consideration to Allah's throne. Al-Hakim recorded, and Ibn Abbas, who did not relate it to the Prophet it is Sahih according to uh, criteria of two Sahih. If the seven heaven and seven earth were flattened and laid by side, they would add up to the size of a ring in a desert compared to the kursi, that is a footstool. And wala yauduhu hibzoma and he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them, meaning it does not burden or cause him fatigue to protect the heaven and earth and all that is in between them. And everything has perfect watch over everything. Nothing ever escape his knowledge and no matter ever a secret to him. All matters are insignificant, modest and humble before him. He is the most rich, worthy and praiseworthy. And Wahua Ali ul Azim, and here he is most high and great. And Al Kabiru Muta'al, the most great, the most high. This is mentioned in Surah number 13 and Ayah number 9. So these are the similar ayahs and authentic hadith about uh, Allah's attribute must be treated the way of. Or, um, salaf and that's what we have seen about Ayat al-Kursi Zakallah khairan kaseerah